the Abscondo Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Abscondo Podcast. This week we're going to take a step back and I want to talk about what we're doing here. What am I trying to share? What am I trying to teach with this podcast, with the daily posts, with the books and everything else? You know, what's it all about? And the reason I I ask this and bring this topic up, this goes back to kind of square one, is because it occurs to me that it is very rare that anyone comes along and says, uh, you know, I'd like to learn this stuff. I'd like to to learn about, um, you know, spirituality. I'd like to learn, I'd like to, to awaken. I'd like to find present moment awareness or find perfect love and align with it. I think we don't do enough, or I don't do enough, to talk about why this is important. And... Over the past few weeks, we have this escalating panic being generated by the media about the virus, and now the economy is starting to collapse and everything else, and it reminds me how important it is what we're doing here. And I think it would be helpful to anyone listening if I were to take about a dozen steps back and talk about the journey that I went on why I did it, and why I think that this is so important. This isn't easy. The purpose of what we're doing is to end suffering and to find freedom. That's what I'm talking about. I'm fine, and you know, to end suffering. And I think the problem is that to do this, you have to go through some temporary, short-term pain. You have to undo a lot of the conditioning, a lot of the programming that's been done to you by society. And in the short term, people experience that as a sort of depressing or difficult thing to do. And this is, I think, what holds people back. And I think people don't believe that on the other side of that is, you know, abundance, success, happiness, joy, the end of suffering, the end of illness, and life sort of at the center of the wheel. But that is the case. And I want to talk about my journey, which I guess, you know, it's hard to say when when it began, but it certainly has been going on my entire adult life. I think we are so conditioned in our youth by our parents, by school, by the media, and we, we so want to and we so do believe in everything we're taught and then some of us some of us go to university or some of us find out earlier that some of these lessons aren't true but for those of us who are, who are fortunate enough to go to university we learn even more lessons about how the world is and 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 what you know what path to pursue and what's supposed to make us happy and we build up all this so-called knowledge and training and conditioning and then at some point we come out the other end at some point, we have to go get a job or start a business or whatever, and we and we we, we realize pretty quickly, or at some point, that things aren't exactly as we were taught. Real life is a little bit messier than we were told, and now you face a choice. And this is true about work, it's true about relationships, you know, marriage was supposed to save you and a great job was supposed to be the way and benefits and all this stuff. And an education was supposed to assure, um, you know, some protection from, from, from threat and some financial security and things like this. And even if you do get that, you're going to be happy. This is the storyline. Uh, we believe that there's, um, you know, legitimate authority in the world, that the mainstream media basically is telling us the truth, that medicine is trying to help us, that schools and universities are trying to, to teach us what's what's real and true and, and it work to our benefit, that marriage is a wonderful thing with no downside, you know, that the food that's advertised to us is just fine. <laughs> and there's, there's all these areas of life that if you basically just go along with what you're told you get to a point where it just isn't so, and it's hard to ignore. And now, if you were to start to tackle some of this, you'd go through some kind of uh, painful, short-term 
shift where you begin to open your eyes and have to do some research and re-educate yourself or undo the education that's already been done to you, the conditioning, the programming. And so people tend to not want to do that. They tend to want to, you know, hide their heads in the sand. And I get that, you know. So for me, I came out of college and I was a big believer, you know. I, I thought my everything was wonderful that I would be rich pretty soon from from the I came out during the during the dot com bubble and there were plenty of opportunities and I got got offered stock options and a great job and all this. And then pretty quickly, nine eleven came along, the economy crashed, and I was out of a job. And then I started questioning, you know, 9-11, I'm a reasonable person. I started questioning what that was all about. I saw what the government was doing, how they were using that. I don't want to go into details of the war on terror and all this stuff, but it was enough that I didn't feel like I understood that, you know, the reality of, you know, the political realities were not what anything I've ever seen before or understood before. So I needed to understand this. And I went down a path of re-educating myself in politics and I became basically an activist. And maybe they'll, they'll be kind of surprising to anybody who knows me because now I'm not very political at all. Um, and there's a reason for that. I'll get into that maybe here. Um, but the point is, I spent many years just with the area of politics, re-educating myself, looking at underground independent, uh, you know, uh, sites and 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 discussion forums and materials. I read Adbusters and The Stranger and Seattle and listened to KXP morning shows on Saturday morning and got the scoop of what's going on about George Bush and about the administration and the war in Iraq and how it was all a lie. And it was painful. It was kind of an addictive painful. I, I enjoyed. I had watched Bill Maher and all these things and I'd get all into it and get worked up. And I spent many years be, you know, arguing and debating people trying to get them to see the realities of politics. The underlying assumption I had was that there was some good politics uh, possible, that maybe progressive politics could actually help us and be the answer. And I believed so many times over the years, you know, this, this, this candidate, you know, Obama's going to do it. Um, Bernie Sanders is going to do it. And it was important to re-educate myself about the mainstream narrative regarding politics. But of course, what I found out as I went further down this path is that politics is, is just a sport. It's, it's a distraction, an illusion um, for many reasons. Um, now, I also had, I also had um, a re-education in terms of my health and diet. You know, I used to just eat whatever tasted good and, and didn't really work out much or anything. And, and then I discovered you know, the low-carb diets, uh, Four Hour Body by Tim Ferriss, um, and many other low-carb diets where, you know, where I realized that sugar and simple carbs are not good for us, probably the number one cause of, of heart disease and probably cancer and everything else because it's so toxic for us. And so there was a re-education about what it means to eat right and, to, and so I could, you know, be in shape and, and be healthy. And there were areas, and, I, and I'm going through all this because I want to suggest that it's not just as simple as going straight to reading Course in Miracles or straight to reading Eckhart Tolle. There is no short path to re-educating, to undoing the conditioning. It's every area of society. Because if you don't do it in all these areas, you're still going to believe the mainstream media. You're still going to believe the next politician. You're still going to listen to authority. You're going to ignore the authority within you and think there's some external authority. You're going to agree to situations and things that is not going to align with your ability to awaken. And this is why it's important to go after every single area of life. And I would even suggest that understanding economic reality and political reality is probably a good first step. And I'm reminded of this when I watched... um, just this week, I watched um, Manufacturing Consent with Noam Chomsky back from 1992. It's free on YouTube. Again, Manufacturing Consent by Noam Chomsky. If you've not seen it, highly recommend it as a way of sort of deprogramming your belief in what the media does. Because people still do believe that the media is basically telling the truth. And this shocks me. These are corporations that, that are there to, to make money. And to, and to condition us and to, and to turn us into subservient, you know, slaves to, uh, to, the, to the economic system. And people, you know, 
tune in every every day. They they're on their devices or they're watching TV or they're watching CNN or whatever. And this is influencing the way you think. It's influencing what you see as reality. You don't have to watch the news. You should not watch the news if you want to find, you know, a state of of joy, which is what you do want. You want to stop suffering. You're not missing anything. I haven't watched the news um, for, I don't know how many years, five or six, seven years. I really haven't watched the news at all. Um, And I haven't been, there hasn't been a problem. And I know you're trying to fit in, maybe at work, you're trying to know what's going on in the world you know, and that's the problem is that you're in a situation where you're trying to conform to people who have been so conditioned. And, and that's another area. How do you become more independent economically? How do, you, how do you do things on your terms? See, it's not going to be as easy as just listening to what I say and then tomorrow you're, you're suddenly in a different state of being. There's a process of undoing suffering, of undoing the damage done to us. And... It goes across every area of life. You know, the healthcare system. I haven't been to the doctor for 15 years, you know, and I've never been, and, and I used to be sick all the time when I was stressed out before, before I, I had, had found inner peace. I was sick every two months pretty severely and just, you know, laying in bed and, and just, you know, I believed that I was going to get sick when somebody coughed next to me and then I did. And now I'm with my current partner who taught me that, um, that you don't have to get sick. You can be in a good state of being. You can meditate, and your body heals itself. You never get to a point of being sick, and I basically haven't been ill for, for several years. And if I do get a little scratchiness in my throat, I'll, I'll go meditate two or three times and feel my body healing it just like that, reversing it right away. And people don't know this. you know. So we talk about you know the healthcare system is doing more damage than good. You don't need those drugs. You need... Your body can heal itself. If you're paying attention to your emotions, to your thoughts, if you're minimizing stress, if you're meditating every day, you're not going to need the healthcare system. Okay, if you, maybe you can break your leg and have to go and get it fixed, but, but overall, that's not your salvation, okay? And let's even talk about relationships. I mean, everybody just goes and they believe right away in the normal model of relationships, which is monogamy, which means you meet one person and you, and you like the, each other and, you, and you're attracted to each other and you get along. And so you're supposed to be enough for each other your whole lives. And if either of you gets to a point where you have other needs outside that relationship, you're a terrible person, you lose access to everything, you're punished severely, and your life is ruined. Now, this is a ridiculous contract that I'm never going to sign again. I made the mistake once in my life um, to get married, and it's and it can ruin, and it does ruin, perfectly wonderful relationships when you bring the idea of legal church marriage. And let's talk about church. Here's another thing. You know, church has this <laughs> has this um, monopoly on spirituality, and yet it's only a centralized institution that's serving its own interests. It has no interest in healing you because if you're healed, you're not going to need to go to church. They want you to keep coming. They want you to, to feel like a sinner. They want you to um, to think that there's some kind of magic that they provide that will get you into heaven. So we're looking at all these areas in society and we're looking at how we're conditioned and programmed. And what I'm saying is that if we understand things correctly, suffering ends. We, we gain control over our state of being, over our thoughts, over our emotions, over the outcomes. And I'm not a big I haven't been a big believer in law of attraction, you know, Abraham Hicks and all that, but I did start to read some of that. And I do realize that, you know, that thoughts, especially what I, and what I do in, in, in creativity and so forth, that thoughts have a lot to do with, with our level of success, our external success, um, not just our inner state. And I can tell you that when you learn to meditate and learn to observe your thoughts, observe your, your inner body, your breathing, and constantly are in tune with, with your state of being, it becomes a lot easier to shape your thoughts in a more positive direction and not give in to fear, which is, of course, what A Course in Miracles has taught me as my primary, you know, most recently as my primary you know, step toward this, this level of, of salvation. So what is the point of what I'm talking about even now? What I'm saying is that your life journey, yes, you have to function in the world. Yes, you have to go to school. 
unfortunately. Yes, you know, you, have to, you deal with people that are, that are conditioned and, and not awakened. That's just part of what life is. But there is a good reason to go down this path, which is what I'm talking about, which is, which is undoing the damage done to us so that we can be our natural uh, selves, you know, existing in perfect peace and joy without fear, in bliss, living our dreams, doing and getting and having what we want. That's why I'm doing that. That's what I'm talking about. And I find it remarkable that I basically that no one, no one ever comes to me and says like, I, I want this. I just find that extraordinary because I want it and I've always wanted it. I guess, you know, how do you, how do you go on living in a way that you know, even some of what I'm saying is true and not want to go all the way. Now it takes time. This is a long process. I mean, the conditioning process was long. The deconditioning process, the undoing of the damage, the the healing also takes a long time. But if you don't do it, then you're subject to these forces, you know? Then the media wants to create this panic about a, about a virus that isn't even much worse than a common cold or, the, you know, stuff already out there. The flu is already out there. And we're supposed to shut down the whole world and be scared of everything. And, of course, it's that fear that's causing people to get ill. You know, without the fear, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, your immune system would, would fight off you know, people sneeze on me all the time. I go in public transport. I'm, you know, I travel. Um, I, I, I even, I'll even kiss when, when someone is sick, right? I'm not afraid of being sick because, you know, of course there's germs out there, but we're not going to catch anything if we're living without fear in a state of peace. And that's just the way it is. That's just the truth of the matter. So there's, there's other agendas going on. I'm not going to get into theories about what I, why I think the media is doing this, but you know, there's a lot of money, money to be made when, when you crash an economy and then bring it back. You, 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 know, you sell stock at the top and you buy stock on the, at the bottom and, and so forth. I mean, there's a lot of money in economic swings, and we have to you know, ignore it. Reality is not what's in the news. Reality is what's here now in this very moment where you exist. Reality is who you love. Reality is how you feel. And I want you to get to a place where everything you do comes from a, fe- a good feeling. Because only when you feel good, when, you, when you're living in a state of enjoyment, can you create and do things in a way that brings success and brings enjoyment and everything good into the world. And if, you're doing, if your doing is not from that place, you're miscreating. You're creating from the ego and this is why things fail. This is why things breed ugliness. And there's just no point. You're better off doing nothing. So, um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I hope this made, makes a little bit of sense. Because I covered a lot of topics because that's what this is about. This is about an ongoing daily practice of looking at the truth. And sometimes you don't know the truth, but you do know, for example, that what a politician says doesn't matter because it's always a lie. You do know that what the news is there to do, I hope. You do know what the church is there to do. You do know what school is there to do. You do know what your corporation and your job is there to do. You know what marriage is all about. I guess we're talking about anarchy, right? We're talking about decentralization. We're talking about um, how do you align with love so that you're, you're harmless and do not threaten anyone or cause any harm in the world and then stop aligning with centralized institutions which are not in your interest. That's the state, that's the corporation, and all the institutions. None of them are in your interest. You deal with them because you have to, but you are free. Your mind is free, and your inner body is free. What you do with other people is your decision. Nobody has the ability to tell you what you can and can't do. You know, with all these rules, all these laws from thousands of years so many of them are, are irrelevant because they're not, they're not applicable to this very moment. You know, what you're trying to accomplish, the church might have some opinions about what's good and what's, what's not good, but what, what is your reality right now? What is good for you right now? Nobody figured that out. If everyone figured this stuff out thousands of years ago or hundreds of years ago or, or you know, at the state level, then why do you exist just to try to you know, pick and choose which rules you want to follow, which, which clubs you want to join, 
Uh, you, you exist. You exist because because you have something unique to offer. And that can only happen when you align with your best self, when you end the suffering, when you end the stress, when you end the fear, and when you align with enjoyment, love, and bliss. It's really all, it's just two feelings. It's feeling good or feeling bad, right? And I want you to feel good. Thank you for joining me on the on the podcast here. And I'll leave you with a song of mine. It's called Forbidden Curiosities. Thank you. Hope you'll stay by my side